In 2017, life expectancy in the United States dropped for the second year in a row. Drug overdoses are the single biggest reason why. The opioid epidemic doesn't discriminate. It goes after every single community, urban, suburban, rural, poor, middle class, wealthy, red, blue, purple. Parents, doctors, and those battling addiction are desperate for help. While politicians and policymakers make vague promises, treating the crisis as if it's an unprecedented or unmanageable problem. But it's neither of those things. With bold investments in research and treatment, our federal government has tackled major public health crises before, and we must do it again. In 1981, the Centers for Disease Control reported the very first cases of what came to be known as the AIDS crisis. AIDS, AIDS, the most frightening initials in America Federal health today. officials consider it an epidemic, yet you rarely hear a thing about AIDS it. AIDS is now the leading cause of death among and young And it was people. years before there was any formal response from government or political leaders, and we didn't really have any kind of meaningful comprehensive government response until the Ryan White Care Act almost 10 years later. Ryan White was a teenager in the late 80s when he contracted HIV through blood products as a hemophiliac. He put a real human face on the epidemic and helped transform people's understanding of the virus. Well, I think I had, you know, I plan my future. I plan to go to college and so forth, but we really just live one day at a time. Um, he passed away in 1990 and in Congress enacted the Ryan White Care Act shortly after his death in 1990. In the first decade of the HIV crisis, we didn't have the services we needed to combat the epidemic. The Ryan White Care Act was the turning point. It set out a comprehensive framework for how to deal with the whole range of issues confronting the lives of people living with HIV, the prevention needs, and the research needs about how do you combat this. And that's what I'd like to see is that investment and that kind of comprehensiveness that we saw with Ryan White applied to the opioid crisis. I'm a guy that grew up in the inner city of New York. I grew up in the projects, single parent household. And for a while my mother had a pretty serious alcohol problem. What we had to do as a family was to wrap our collective arms around my mother to make sure that she got the services and the attention and the care that she needed to overcome her addiction. So you have an individual that's addicted, it's not just that individual that's impacted, it's that individual's family, it's that family's community. And so if we don't look at this in a holistic way, we're not just losing the person, we're losing the family, we're losing the community, which makes our nation a lot weaker. If we can put a man on the moon, okay, um, if we can address the AIDS uh, epidemic back in the day, then we can really do the same thing with opiate abuse. And we need champions like the Senator to champion this cause and move it forward. I think we're getting to the level of urgency that reflects what we saw with the AIDS crisis. I think part of what really began to change the conversation at that time was the recognition of the widespread impact. And when you can marginalize a subset of the population and say, well, it's this population's problem, then it's, it's harder to rise to the level of urgency. I think with the changing face of addiction, the fact that it's not just a black or brown face, that it impacts everyone regardless of their ethnicity or socioeconomic status, it really has begun to swing the conversation to the point where we understand that the urgency lies for all of us. Federal funding will help us to ensure that we are funding the role of care managers, funding the role of recovery coaches, those ancillary providers that are really critical to ensure success in beating this disease. We're doing the best we can with what we have but we absolutely need the federal government to come in. When you have a whole generation of people that are hooked on drugs, I think it's incumbent on the federal government to get in the game. You know, I, I like the senator's bill because it puts real money behind a real problem. You can't have a solution to a national crisis with no national funding. We're judged about whether or not we do help those people that fall down. And, uh, you know, this generation that has this problem will look back on whether or not their country was there for them. He wasn't the stereotype of what most people think about of those that are addicted, and that's why I talk about it. He had a great job. He had just gotten engaged. They were talking about having kids. Uh, he was two and a half years into recovery. And um, one night, we don't know why, he overdosed and died. It was uh, fentanyl. We're losing a generation. If we don't do anything about it, we're gonna lose that generation. States, communities, and families are on the front lines of the opioid epidemic, fighting back with everything they have. Washington, pff, 
it's only nibbled around the edges. But when the government takes bold action, we can tackle big problems like the AIDS epidemic, like the opioid epidemic. It'll take a lot of hard work and political courage, but we can do this together. This isn't about politics. This is about saving lives.